Hey everyone, welcome to Prop Wash Ranch. As you can see, we're not at the ranch. We're actually in front of a Shrike commander. This commander used to belong to Bob Hoover. That's right, the Bob Hoover. He used to do a stunt routine in a Shrike, uh, much like this one. I'm not sure I like the description, but then that's what it's called. This means he's going to come down, do a 360 overhead, shutting off both engines. The amazing thing that he would do was energy management. He would do a routine with loops and barrel rolls in this cabin class seven seat aircraft, not really designed for stunts, uh, for aerobatics. He would do loops and barrel rolls and then kill one engine and continue to do loops and barrel rolls and then kill both engines and continue to do loops and barrel rolls. He would then land and taxi up to center show without ever having to start the engine or add power. Well, I'm sure you knew he was going to make it. He did this with incredible energy management. That's what made him one of the greatest pilots of all time. Energy management is something that I think most pilots struggle with, even very experienced ones. I struggle with it. I don't practice it. We don't practice it often enough. So in this episode, I'm going to make a fool of myself practicing energy management. So let's go to the ranch and let's go flying. I'm climbing up to altitude. There's some numbers that pilots should know off the top of their head on any aircraft they're flying, and they should know them quick. The, one of the really important ones is the glide speed, power off glide speed. In this aircraft, it's 75 miles per hour. The first thing you should do in an engine out, you should already have a landing point picked out. Uh, anytime you're flying, you should just be picking out landing points until you can no longer make that landing point and then you pick the next landing point. You should know what your glide speed is and this one at 75 miles per hour. On an engine out, immediately pitch for 75 and point yourself towards your, and start gliding to your intended touchdown point. That's more important than trying to start the engine or anything. I'm just sitting here circling above the ranch, climbing. Trying to get up where the air is cooler. Here in sunny southern Arizona, it's quite hot. I, uh, the last couple of days I've been wanting to go flying and I haven't because it's been too darn windy. Today's about 10 mile an hour winds. We had 30 the other day. I didn't feel like flying in 30 mile an hour winds. Called me a pansy. Uh, so optimal glide speed is 75. Usually, your best angle of bank, if you need to turn while you're gliding, is 45 degrees. 45 is where your horizontal component of lift and your vertical component of lift are equal. Anything more than that, you're sacrificing too much uh, vertical lift for, for horizontal lift, and you'll sink faster than you need to. We're coming up on 7,500. Uh, that's where I'm going to do this. Alright, leveling off at 7,500. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start this three miles from my touchdown point. 
going to keep my cow flaps closed, try to not shock cool my engine. I'm going to ease the throttle back, I'm going to power off stall, straight ahead power off stall. Now normally the recovery for a power off stall involves adding power, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to practice my energy management and try to not have to add power. Work on work on Bob Hoovering this thing. Work on uh, learning the aircraft and learning what it can do, how far it will go, and, and get comfortable um, with me on what what it's capable of with the engine out how far I can go. That's that's the big one. And then and then making it go where I want to. So here we are. Three miles from the touchdown point. Four thousand five hundred feet AGL. I'm going to do a straight ahead power off stall and then not recover with the engine. I will do a figure eight and then another straight ahead power off stall and then set myself up for a pattern coming into land at Top Wash Ranch. So here we go. He's going to throttle back. Cow flaps are closed. Maintaining altitude. Three miles from my touchdown point right now. And I'm just going to hold altitude. I'm going to hold altitude all the way through the stall. Just about there. And it's going to break any second. We're going to drop. And drop. Nope. There we go. Drop. All right. Oh, I just added a little throttle. It's, uh, it's instinct. So we're setting up for a 75 mile an hour glide. I just kind of wasted a little bit of time doing that. All right. 75, and we're holding 75, and we're going into a 45 degree bank for a figure eight. We're losing about 600 feet a minute. All right, too much nose down. See, this is where I need to practice. Trim back, that'll help me. I'm all over. All right. Doing our second half of the figure eight. Oh, that's not a 45 degree. Let's get into a 45 degree. All right, there's a complete figure eight. I'm gonna do a, get right into the wind. Right into the wind. And I'm gonna do another straight ahead power off stall. This time I'm gonna try to not instinctively add power. And ooh, there we go. All right, and it's about to drop. There she is. Woo! Bringing it back to 75. I didn't add power that time. We're getting better. Okay, I have plenty of altitude right now, so I just need to not screw this up. I could probably manage another figure eight. But we're not going to. I'm setting up for a pattern for landing at prop wash. This would be a lot easier at the big airport. Because um, there's, there's a lot more runway. This runway is pretty small. a base. I have a ton of altitude. I have too much. Too much. See, this is where it gets into energy management. And uh, I, I almost want to do a 360, but then I don't think I'd have the energy to, to complete it. So we're, we're about to just uh, S-turn. This is not Bob Hoover. We are S-turning down to the runway, creating as much drag as possible. Oh, jeez. I have the wonderful problem of too much altitude, I guess. All right, this is this is still too high. Now, another S turn. That's ah, getting more like it. All right, watch my airspeed. Don't get too slow. And we're gonna do a forward slip on down into the runway. Jiminy, that's still too high. Oh yeah, still too much. All right, I'm not actually gonna touch down. Cause I got this. All right, I had that. We're gonna go practice that again. All right, climbing back to altitude the second time. When I started my flight training, originally all my landings, um, my instructor was having me land uh, when I am a beam my intended touchdown point. 
I would easily throttle on back to nothing. And the goal is to, to finish my pattern out, finish out the downwind, the base, and the final without ever having to add power. And this gets constantly um, in your mind. It gets you used to, to gliding into land. Uh, you get a better feel for, for the, the glide ratio, for the sink rate of the aircraft, and, and picking a point and knowing that you can make it there, and managing your energy with the, with the engine off. Uh, when I continue on my training, uh, going into IFR and commercial, that you get away from all that. At least I got away from all that, and I haven't I haven't glided in uh, intentionally to the to the landing point um, for for quite some time. And I I should get back to that. That's a good practice to to pick your landing point back your throttle and don't add power until you land. That way you know what you can do. You know what the plane can do. I'm going to do that today uh, a couple times. But right now we're almost to our altitude. Shooting for 7,500 again. Oh, I'm way away from the runway. I want to do this five miles from the runway. This time I'm going to do a, a straight on power off stall, a figure eight, and then a, a straight on power off stall, and then another figure eight. I had enough speed to do another figure eight last time. All right, there's my altitude. I'm five miles away right now. So we're easing the throttle back, being nice and gentle on my engine, closing the cow flaps, try to keep that engine warm. Straight ahead, just rolled the power off. I'm going to maintain altitude into the stall. We're going to try and maintain altitude into the stall. All right, we're just about there. There's the buffet, and she's sinking. Okay, Woo! didn't have throttle. I wanted to. Okay, get my airspeed back. Shooting for 75. There's 75. And we're going to start a figure eight. Something that I'm doing here, I have heard that this applies to all Cessnas, at least, is full back elevator trim is your optimal glide speed. I haven't tested it in all Cessnas, but I've tested it in this, and I can tell you it's true. If I roll the, the trim all the way back, um, it will glide at 75 straight and level. If I start turning it, it messes with it. So that's easy, that, that is a, a great help, if that indeed applies to your aircraft. Uh, in the event of a power out and you get playing with trying to start your engine or prey or whatever it is you're, you're doing, uh, it'd be pretty easy to, to neglect your airspeed and any gain in airspeed or loss in airspeed is uh, a loss in distance that you can go because you're not at your optimum, optimal, you're not at your optimal, your angle of descent. That's the first half of the figure eight. Uh, that's, that's the whole figure eight, now that I think about it. So we're going to do a straight on, power off stall. All right, it's buffeting, and there she goes. Get back some airspeed, back to 75, and we're going to do another figure eight. I don't know if I'm going to make this. That runway looks mighty far away when you got the engine off. Oh, I just, I am not killing the engine because I'm a little chicken butt. The engine's at idle. 45 degrees, 45 degrees. There's a lot of altitude doing that. I'm not going to make it if I finish this figure eight. Not a chance. We're going to do it anyway. There's the end of my figure eight. Enough goofing around. Oh my gosh. I'm actually going to make this. This this surprises me. Um, it did not feel like I would have made that. Uh, but I, I'm actually set up better. Provided this headwind doesn't slow me down too much. Yeah, I've got this made. Um, that actually really surprised me. I didn't think I had room for that second figure eight. I, I have more than enough room. That's. 
I'm going to have to bleed off some airspeed. Flaps are coming down. And let's do two notches and go into a forward slip. A little bit of a forward slip. Nope. All right, so I'm not actually going to land it again, but I got this made again. All right, we're just going to do a little go around here. Add some power. All right, this time I'm just going to do a couple. Uh, going to do a couple of patterns and uh, beam my intended touchdown. I'm going to pull back the power. All right, first standard standard pattern altitude. He's on back with that throttle. Okay, this is a beam my intended touchdown. So, cup flaps are closed. Throttle's coming back. Uh, mixture's rich. Carp heat on. And we're gliding it on down. Uh-oh. I overestimated my glide. Oh, this one. I'm, uh... We have totally foregone the base leg, and what we are doing here is a modified rounded final to try to make up for my lack of energy management. And we're doing some flaps. All right, we got it made once again. It wasn't pretty, but we made it happen. Doing a go around. Oh, here it is, RP. Let's get some horsepower. All right, we're at pattern altitude. A beam, my intended touchdown. I'll pull back the throttle, and we're going to glide in. This time, I'm actually going to land. All right, there's my intended touchdown. He's in the throttle, I'm back. Cow flaps, mixture's rich. Car beat on. Trim back. We, we, we did a decent enough base right there. This is, this is going better. I, I can see improvement just on this flight of, of uh, me knowing what the plane can do. Uh, I'm already more comfortable with the glide range. Just a real light slip coming in here. I got a little too much speed. Enjoyed that. I really recommend getting out and doing that. Back to the basics. Go cut your engine. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. 